Today, we're going to be taking a look at the best partners for all the restricted Pokemon and explaining why they work so well together. So to kick things off here, the first restricted I want to take a look at is none other than Groudon. I think Groudon right now is one of the best Pokemon in the format. It is obviously a, you know, it's a Sunsetter to Weather Setter, which I think is very, very good. But it also is not a Fire type, meaning that it does open up for other Fire type slots that aren't necessarily, you know, your Fire type Sunsetter. Similar to, you know, for example, if you look at things like Torkoal and Ninetales, right, they are Fire types that work in the Sun but they don't necessarily abuse the sun as well as other fire types do. Because of that, I think Groudon is incredibly good, right? But what Pokemon work best with it? So as we mentioned, fire types work incredibly well with this Pokemon. Um, I will give an honorable mention to Chiyu here, but I do think one of the better partners is definitely Ogreborn Hearthflame. Ogreborn Hearthflame works really well for a couple of reasons, right? One, obviously one of the biggest issues Groudon has is opposing weathers. And when you have a look at all the three other weathers, right? You've got Hail, which you can hit with fire moves, right? If they send out their ice types, you can just Ivy Cudgel them. Uh, the Sand, obviously, if they're bringing their rock types like Tita, you can just go for things like Woodhammer. And the same with Kyogre, right? Which is going to be another big issue for this Pokemon. It's a water type that does not want to eat the Woodhammers, which I do think is very, very good. Then, the next Pokemon we have here is Rillaboom. Obviously, it has very good synergy there with Ogreporn, but it is also a very, very good switch in for something like Groudon, right? Obviously, they do share an ice type weakness, which isn't necessarily the best thing in the world. But when you have something like Kyogre in the game, switching out your Groudon into something like an Assault Burst Rillaboom, I do think is very, very good. Not to mention, you know, Fake Out, you know, and Grass Moves are just really good with Groudon, right? Especially if you do run something like a Swords Dance Groudon. Um, should, yeah, yeah, yeah I'll, I'll talk about two. I think some of the better sets for Groudon as well, I, I probably should have said this at the start, are things like Clear Amulet with like Swords Dance. Um, also, I think Assault Vest is also not too bad, but obviously if you do have Rilla with um, Groudon, probably something like Clear Amulet and then like Swords Dance because Rillaboom can allow you to set up. Um, and Rillaboom also is another Pokemon that just really wants to take the Assault Vest, right? Um, that's not Assault Vest, Scott. That's Assault Vest. There we go. Uh, but some of the other Pokemon that I think obviously work incredibly well here with Groudon are the Protosynthesis Pokemon, right? So, oh god. Um, so if we have a look at some of these Protosynthesis Mons here, um, obviously I think all of them definitely have some use with it, right? Um, obviously Pokemon like Brute Bonnet, which I unironically think is actually, like I think Brute Bonnet's not like, like not that bad right now. I think it's pretty slept on. Um, Gadging Fire is obviously not bad if you're a Dragon type. You know, go down the list. Roaring Moon is obviously very very good for speed control. Same with um, Sandy Shocks. But the two main guys I want to talk about here when paired with Groudon are Fluttermane and Raging Bolt. I think these Pokemon are just incredible, right? Um, Raging Bolt is very similar to what we said about Ogre Pond Rillaboom in the sense that it gives you a really good answer into something like Kyogre, um, which historically has been one of the better checks to Groudon because, again, Groudons can't really switch into the Water Spouts. Sure, they can set up the Sun, but they're still taking a ridiculous amount of damage where things like, obviously, the Raging Bolt and the, the Rillaboom can both switch into it. It's a resisted hit. Um, and yeah, it just feels pretty damn nice, right? But not to mention, again, Protosynthesis, getting that, you know, special attack buff on this Pokemon, it's already so fat as it is. You can run, you know, Assault Vest, Booster Energy, you know, even something like Safety Goggles, really, if you think your team needs it, can always be really, really good. Not to mention, it does give you a Pokemon that can kind of, you know, go toe-to-toe -to -toe with Mariah on, right? Obviously, it is a bit slower, but it has the bulk to live any one hit, especially if you go for something like Terra Fairy, and then you can threaten a one-shot in return with something like, you know, a Draco Meteor of your own. Uh, and then there's Fluttermane. Fluttermane, I think, is just the perfect partner for Groudon. Um, obviously, a choice specs Fluttermane next to a Groudon is incredibly good. You have a really powerful physical attacker next to a very power, powerful special attacker. It's a Pokemon that doesn't care about, you know, fake outs or intimidates coming out of Incineroar. And it can just fire off these massive moon blasts while also getting the speed boost thanks to Groudon, which can also be incredibly good when you're going up against things like Helirak Shadow Rider, you know, getting that speed boost, making sure you say like, hey, you know, you have to Terry here if you want to live any attack coming out of my Fluttermane. And then even then, you know, a choice specs Terra Fairy Fluttermane with moon blast, Dazzling Gleam, Shadow Ball, whatever it is you want uh, is very, very good. Not to mention, you can always slap in Icy Wind as your last option there next to a Groudon, and you can run a little bit of speed on your Groudon, have a speed boost to Fluttermane, and then, you know, after an Icy Wind, your Groudon can outspeed things it normally shouldn't. Um, and then I guess, finally, just as a, some honorable mentions, I think speed control is really good with Groudon. Um, options, of course, like Whimsicott and Tornadus are the first two major ones that come to mind, but Groudon can even run with, you know, some Trick Room setters, right? I, I definitely could see a world where you run, like, a hybrid team where, you know, maybe you've got a Specs Fluttermane with a last option with, you know, something like, um... Something like uh, Trick Room is what I'm trying to get at there. Uh, and then, of course, you know, other Pokemon like Indeedee as well, right? Having a terrain to, you know, override something like Mariadon can always be good. Even opposing Rillabooms. Um, then also just giving you a Trick Room option as well if you think that your Groudon does need it. Uh, plus, it's also just really nice to have a Trick Room option for always reversing. Because I do think there are a few restricted Pokemon, which we'll get to later, that all function pretty well under Trick Room. So, carrying over from some of the, you know, the Protosynthesis mods here, I want to talk about Mariadon and some of the Quirk Drive Pokemon. 
So Maridon is a very interesting Pokemon because I think coming into the format, a lot of people looked at Maridon as one of the top threats and it honestly is not getting some of the results that I think a lot of us thought it would get, right? A very, very powerful Pokemon that has the ability to set up terrain, which makes it incredibly strong. It also has, you know, ridiculous you know, speed and special attacks that with, you know, again, being an electric dragon, I think is just a very, very good type, right? We see currently in Regulation F, Regi Bolt is everywhere, arguably the best Pokemon in the format. Um, and Maridon is kind of just Raging Bolt on crack. Doesn't have the priority move in Thunderclap, but it is so damn fast, it's going to basically outspeed anything anyway. But some of the best partners, I think, for Mariadon are obviously always going to be the Quirk Drive Pokemon. Uh, as a matter of fact, I think a majority of its best partners are the Quirk Drive Pokemon, right? So when we have, like, when I, when I kind of think about them, right, Um, again, they're all pretty decent. Like, Iron Hands is, like, also a decent option, which we probably won't touch on here. But I think Iron Moth, Iron Jugulus, and um, Iron Bundle, and also Iron Valiant, even Iron Treads to a certain extent are all pretty good. Uh, but mainly today, we're going to be talking about Iron Bundle and Iron Jugulus. Um, so Iron Bundle, that's... Damn, it's got... Uh, Jugulus. Yeah, so Iron Bundle, what does it do? Um, essentially, one of the biggest things I think we're going to see in the upcoming format is a lot of these 135 speed tier uh, Pokemon, the Maridons, the Caridons, the Fluttermanes that you use, all very, very fast, all playing this very weird speed game, right? Especially too, because even if you scarf this thing up, you know, say you just go like Choice Scarf, um, and then you go like 252 Timid, the uh, speed boost of Fluttermane is going to be the exact same speed as you. So how do you kind of counteract that, right? The answer is you go Iron Bundle, which is one point faster than all of them, and he gets the booster coming off of, you know, the, the Haridon engine or the Electric Train, which is very, very good. And then you can spam out things like Ice and Wind. Another really good option, though, is Iron Jugulus. Now, Iron Jugulus is really good because I think it kind of enables Maridon to play a slower, bulkier set. Um, as it has access to like a speed booster tailwind it also has access to things like snarl and dark bolt which are going to be very very good into kelly rack shadow rider which is probably the best pokemon in the format right um and another really good pokemon as well i think paired up with ride on is just fluttermane a big reason why i think fluttermane is super good on this team is because you can use it as a booster speed pokemon but when you go up against you know these sun teams which again i think Groudon is probably going to be a top three archetype in the format um, you know, going up against Opposing Sun, having options into the Sun teams yourself are going to be very, very good, right? Especially if something like Coridon even, you know, continues to rise up in usage, because it is. I think a lot of people are starting to realize, like, Groudon isn't the only really good Sun set. Like, you know, Coridon is also very, very good. It hits very, very hard. Um, and because of that, I do think having your own Fluttermane is going to be very, very nice. Uh, but very similar to what we said about Groudon as well. I do think, you know, Pokemon like Tornadus are obviously really, really good with this team, right? Um, obviously, you know, if you have Tornadus, you can use it to change the weather on these Groudon teams, which I do think is very, very valuable. The next guy here is another one of the massive threats in this generation, and that is Calyrex Ice. I truly think Calyrex Ice is probably going to be one of the top five Pokemon in the format. This one is just incredibly powerful. You have a look at its stats, it's absolutely absurd. You know, I've spoken about it a few times in the past week, but Chilling Nay, or as one I should say, for both the Calyrex forms, is pretty damn busted, especially when you have a look at their signature moves, you know, in Glacial Lance, right? And, um, you know, obviously Astral Barrage for the Ghost one. But, you know, Calyrex Ice, it just has great coverage, right? Obviously, Glacial Lands, Close Combat essentially hits everything. You also have access to higher horsepower as well, which is very, very good. Uh, but this is also a restricted Pokemon that can set its own Trick Room, which I do think is very, very important for some of these guys. And it's also base 50 speed with ridiculous bulk, right? Being base 50, it is the slowest restricted Pokemon in the format. And really, the only major Trick Room, you know, abusers that really um, can go toe-to-toe -to -toe with this thing are Pokemon like, you know, um, Zero Speed, Iron Hands. You know, you're talking to both Ursa Luna forms, like... There are very few Pokemon that can kind of rival this. Like, Torkoal's, like, not bad. But I feel like in a metagame where you've got Groudon and Coridon, um, don't run Torkoal as your Sunsetter, guys. Um, but yeah, Calyrex Ice is just an incredibly good Pokemon right now. And I think the best partners for it, honestly, are for Rigoroth, uh, for Rigorath, uh, Blood Moon, Ursa Luna, uh, Ogre Pawn. Now, with the Ogre Pawn, this can really be up to you. Um, I think both Wellspring and Cornerstone are very, very good, but I actually think Cornerstone really is on the rise in this regulation, and I'll kind of break down why in just a second. Uh, and the final Pokemon I want to talk about here is Ninetales. Um, so why is Giraffe so good? Uh, obviously, you know, you're talking about a Pokemon that is naturally weak to Sucker Punches, which isn't very good. Uh, and when you play Trick Room, one of the last things you want to do is get up your Trick Room and then just lose to your opponent priority spamming you, you know, with things potentially like a um, Choice, uh, sorry, like I was going to say Choice Banded, you know, um, Rayquaza, but Clear Amulet, Sword Dance, Ray, right? If like you lead Rayquaza, you know, yeah, sure, one guy gets up the Trick Room, but then he just like SDs Terra Normals and runs through your team, you know, with ease beats, it's not very fun. So because of that, Draft is pretty good. Um, Draft also is an incredibly good Pokemon into the um, the Calyrex Shadow Rider. It like literally hard walls it. You're immune to the Astral Barrage and you resist the Expanding Force, uh, which is obviously very, very nice. And it's just a consistent Trick Room setup. Blood Moon Ursa Luna, on the other hand, is just very good with Calyrex Ice, in my opinion, because it is a massive Trick Room Swoop, similar to Calyrex Ice. 
but it hits on the special end. So you've got this Mon, you know, with Life Orb, Terra Normal. It can hit you very, very hard with things like Blood Moon and Hyper Voice. Um, and if you do bring in something like a special wall that can kind of wall it out, then you've just got Calyrax Ice here hitting, you know, with the massive Glacial Lances, which is very, very cool. And then Ogre Pawn. Why Ogre Pawn right now? Essentially, I think what Ogre Pawn's job is in the current metagame, it is, it's literally there to die. That's what Ogre Pawn is there to do. You want this thing to redirect, you want it to die, and then you want to get into your Blood Moon or your Kali on turn two, right? That's essentially what this Pokemon wants to do. And the reason why I think Ogre Pond Rock is really, really good at it is because of Sturdy. We're in a restricted format right now where, say, for example, you're going up against a, you know, let's just say some Chiyu core, right? Maybe you're playing up against, you know, Mariadon plus Chiyu, something like that, right? Just, you know, uh, for the sake of this, right? If I go into my Ogre Pond Wellspring, well, it's just going to outspeed me and like a choice banded, you know, let's just say a choice banded close combat, probably just going to KO me. Then all of a sudden my giraffe is sitting there in the sun having to tank, you know, something like an overheat, right? Which isn't very fun. And I, I can tell you right now, unless you terrify a giraffe, you know, you're not eating that overheat. Uh, and at that point, you're probably also just going to die to a Specs, you know, Dark Pulse anyway. So because of that, I think Sturdy is incredibly good at just making sure that you can eat two attacks to make sure you get up the Trick Room on your, you know, your giraffe or your Kelly. I do think is very pog. Uh, and then finally, Nine Tails. Um, having the ability to set the weather is very, very good. Obviously, if, you know, going up against a Sun Team, Calyrex Ice being your, you know, your restricted Pokemon isn't the greatest. And because of that, I think having the ability to flip the weather with something like Nine Tails is very good. Uh, not to mention, if you're getting up on Aurora Veil, you have these two incredibly bulky sweepers in Kali and uh, Ursa Luna. So Aurora Veil can go a long way, like just allow, like allowing them to play outside of Trick Room. I think even um, with just insane bulk, which I do think is pretty good. So continuing on the Kali train here, we have Calyrex Shadow Rider. Now Calyrex Shadow is probably my favorite Pokemon to play right now in the metagame. I think this guy's incredibly good. And it also has a lot of really cool partners as well. As well. Mian Xiao is a Pokemon that is on the rise right now. Um, Mian Xiao's greatest thing with Calyrex Shadow Rider is it has access to Wide Guard, which really slows down other Calyrex Shadows. It also has access to Faint, uh, which means if you go up against opposing Wide Guard, you can just break it for your Calyrex, as this is a Pokemon that really loves to spam out both its Astral Barrages and its Expanding Forces. Speaking of expanding force as well, obviously it really likes playing with Ndidi. Ndidi is fantastic because obviously, one, you can get rid of terrain from things like uh, Rillaboom, which can stop it from having priority moves into your Calyrax, but also also really good into Mariadon as well, as Mariadon teams kind of really rely on that electric terrain being up. And because of that, you know, having Calyrax on the board, you know, you go into your Ndidi, you get the terrain wars up with Psychic Surge here, and then you can kind of just follow me as Calyrax just spams out its stupidly broken, you know, stab moves here and kind of sweeps through the game. Um, Calyrex is also a massive fan of having a dark type ally. Um, obviously, Incineroar is one of the best Pokemon in the format always, and I think it is a very, very good partner. But I'm also a big fan of Chi Yu with it, and as a matter of fact, I like Ch Scarf Chi Yu. Um, obviously, having a dark typing next to this guy is very good offensively, right? It, it really struggles into a lot of Pokemon. Um, you know, so I shouldn't say it struggles into a lot of Pokemon, but like having an ally dark type, I think is just super clutch, right? Especially when Chi Yu has the ability to go for things like Overheat and Heat Wave with Choice Specs, or as I said, Choice Scarf into, you know, some other dark types, right? I do think it, like, and again, Beats of Ruin as well, like, with, with this special attack stat, it's pretty nutty. I think they just work incredibly well together. Um, and that's another thing I guess I should have said about Mian Xiao as well. Like, when we talk about those dark types, in a focus, so you can't get intimidated or fake out, and then close combating things like Incineroar is just, like, super pog. They either just die to the close combat, or if they terror, then they just, like, die to Astral Barrage plus um, close combat, which is, like, pretty pog. Uh, and the final one here I'll talk about is just Whimsicott. Um, I think Tornadus also fits like pretty well in this slot. Speed control is just really, really nice. But what Whimsicott, you know, brings outside of speed control is like, well, I mean, it, it's, it's extra speed control. Um, obviously it gets Tailwind, but it also gets Cotton Spore, um, which is very, very good, lowering both opponents by two speed, which is very, very nice. But even things like Fake Tears, right? Um, even Encore as well, if you try to protect or, you know, be pretty in front of it. Um, I've even seen people run stuff like this, where they go like Misty Terrain into these Ndidi teams. And like, as the Ndidi, like, you know, say like, for example, the team we just spoke about with Kali, right? Where they go for something like follow me plus trick room right you just then go for the the mystic terrain take your kill and then you just like on call them back into their trick room as they then just like you know reset uh, as they undo the trick room for you um yeah so that's definitely something to keep in mind it's, it's a really cool mon and you know it, it's not bad and like we're also in a meta game as well where just having like stab moon blast actually just feels good like there's a lot of dragons running around right now and i think you know even just the ability to like you know fish for opposing calibac shadows just for that special attack drop i do think is pretty nice so continuing on with some of the broken Pokemon, we're going back to Coridon, the other major sun setter of the format. So Coridon, very, very similar to Groudon, does work with a lot of its partners, but I do think there are other Pokemon as well that kind of thrive with Coridon, as obviously the typings are a little bit different. Now, I'm not going to lie, um, obviously you can the, all the Protomons are still good, Fluttermane is still absolutely king right now. I, I think it doesn't matter which one of these guys you're running. You just want to go the Fluttermane. Fluttermane with, you know, booster next to this guy with the choice specs in the speed booster, having options like Icy Wind. 
it's too damn good, man. Um, j just go for it. But the other one I really want to talk about here is actually Sandy Shocks. Now, again, one of the biggest issues you have when you're playing like these Sun teams, right, is going up against opposing, uh, you know, Kyogres, right? Now, again, obviously there are options like, um, you know, Rillaboom as well, and also Venusaur, who I actually think works really, really well with Crydon as well. You know, these guys are good, right? Venusaur is obviously a fairy resist when paired with uh, Crydon, which is very, very nice. But Sandy Shocks is a mod that can get the speed booster. It still hits pretty hard. Its bulk is like decent, but it also gets just access to things like Electro Web, which is like pretty cool. Um, it's probably something I even should have mentioned with Groudon as well. It also has Gravity. Now, Gravity doesn't really affect Coriadon, but again, if you pair this up with something like a Groudon, going like Gravity into Press of His Blades obviously is like just very, very nice. And then making sure like your Electro Webs never miss is also pretty cool, right? Uh, but Venusaur, again, we spoke about it. It's a Chlorophyll Mon. Uh, obviously, it's a good switch in for Coriadon as it resists the Fairy types. Uh, and really, I think it's just a pretty decent Pokemon. It, you know, it puts on a bit of offensive pressure. It hits a decent speed stat, you know, if you max it out. Uh, it also has coverage moves as well and things like Earth Power, which is definitely very, very nice. Uh, and I guess the final one we'll touch on here, um, very similar to what we just said, it's Whimsicott. I think Whimsicott is just really, really good right now. Um, actually, another one as well we can kind of touch on is like Jumpluff, because I think Jumpluff does like a very similar thing where it's like Jumpluff doesn't have the, um, it doesn't have the Prankster, but it does have the Chlorophyll. Uh, and it's just a Tailwind setter, right? You can go for things like Sleep Powder, very similar to like what Venusaur can do as well. Um, I don't think you would like want to play all three of these on the same team by any means. As a matter of fact, you probably wouldn't even want to run two of them together. Uh, but they're all just options, right? They're fast Sleep Powder, you know, fast Tailwind setters. Uh, jump off, you know, they can also go for things like Leaf Storm as well, which can be pretty good at chipping down Kyogres. Um, so yeah, just like pretty good supports, I think, paired up with Coriadon, because obviously, you know, this one does want a little bit of speed control. Um, and I do think, you know, some of these do go a long way. So continuing on with the weather, we'll touch on our last guy here, which is Big Kyogre. Now, Kyogre is one of my favorite restrictors. I absolutely love this Pokemon. And a lot of people are kind of sleeping on it right now, saying it's in a relatively poor spot, which I don't necessarily disagree with. But I also think Kyogre is still pretty strong. And I think the core around it is actually really nice. Uh, first one here is just a Moongus. Um, obviously, having redirection plus the ability to heal up your Kyogre, who wants to go for these, you know, very, very powerful water spouts is always very, very nice. Um, but some of the other partners that go really, really well with that are things like Tornadus, of course. Um, Tornadus, you know, having Bleak Wind Storm in the rain is, like, really, really good. It's also a priority Tailwind Pokemon, so you can't really go wrong with it. Um, and again, it also has Rain Dance as well, which I do think having manual weather on these teams is also really, really important. Because it, it doesn't, like, it kind of just means, like, my Kyogre doesn't have to switch in and out all game. It just means, like, hey, oh, you just cycled in your Groudon, now my Kyogre's stuck on the ball with Sun. I'm gonna just go for Rain Dance and reset it. Uh, some of the other partners that are really good are obviously like Urshi Rapid. Um, Kyogre is it? Oh my god, Urshi Rapid. I can't spell apparently. Um, Kyogre obviously is this massive, you know, special attacking water type with water spout. Um, so I think having, you know, again, this physical, like, you know, a physical um, water type with surging strikes is also really, really good. Both Pokemon love having Choice Scarf, but obviously when you have Tornadoes on the team, it can kind of make up for it. Uh, plus, not to mention, they also just pair both incredibly well with the Moongus. Like, redirection, just allowing these guys to click their stabs is really, really nice. Uh, and the last guy I want to talk about here is the bridge, aka Archaladon. Uh, when you look at Kyogre being a pure, um, pure water type, what are its two main weaknesses, right? It's electric and it's grass. What, like, resist both of those? It's dragon, you know? And then steel obviously also resists grass. So because of that, you know, Archaladon defensively is really, really good with Kyogre. Not to mention, you know, Kyogre can sometimes struggle to take on other bulky waters. What is this thing's, you know, signature move? It's Electro Shot. 130 base power never misses, and when you're in the rain, this move is just, it fires automatically. You get plus one every time you click it. It's just really, really good. And as I said, as I said it's like a really good defensive pivot, right? Having like a Salt Vest Plus, like Stalwart, or even like um, Sturdy potentially as well in this. Um, also, what am I doing? Stamina is the best. <laughs> you just go Stamina Body Press. Uh, but yeah, I think Archaladon plus Kyogre is actually a really, really cool archetype. Because again, I think they cover each other super duper well. Um, and yeah, they just like hit things that the other one can't, which I think is really nice. So just to round out the, you know, the Hoenn Weather Trio here, we got Rayquaza. Now, Ray Ray is my all-time favorite restricted. I love this Pokemon so damn much. And I think it has a lot of potential right now. But I definitely think this is a Pokemon that is kind of waiting on the double restricted to really hit its stride. But regardless, I do think that the clear amulet stuff is really good on this Pokemon with Swords Dance plus Extreme Speed. Very, very similar to what we've seen coming out of things like Dragonite right now. You just put this guy next to Chien Fao and he kind of goes in. But one of the biggest things Ray obviously does need is, you know, it needs to find a position to set up. And because of that, I think Incineroar is really good. You know, lowering the opponent's, uh, you know, a physical attack stat, you have Fake Out Parting Shot, which can allow your Rayquaza to, you know, set up and protect as you switch, like, you know, Parting Shot into Chiempao, which is obviously very, very nice. It makes getting Chiempao onto the board much easier. So then I think Golden Girl is also another incredibly good partner with it. Very similar to, like, what I've said in the past about Pokemon, like, um, but Roaring Moon is, like, 
these two just complement each other incredibly well defensively, right? Like, how do you beat Golden Go, right? You know, it's like ground moves are like incredibly good into it. It's like we'll raise in the air. How do you beat Ray? It's stuff like fairy moves, dragon moves, ice moves. What resists all of that? Golden Go with its still typing. Um, and then, yeah, so I just think it's really, really good. Um, I also think teams like this as well, like don't mind having the Giraffe. Um, I think Giraffe is like unironically one of the best Pokemon in the format right now, um, at least for the early format. Like I feel like Giraffe is always good in these like early formats. But again, having a priority block, especially when you're looking to spam priority yourself, I do think is pretty cool. Uh, not to mention, you know, you can run your Ray like very bulky, which is what a lot of people will do. You'll, you'll see a lot of just like, you know, spreads like this with like Assault Vest or something. Sorry, my God. What the hell is happening? Not Assault Vest, sorry. I'm um, adamant is what I meant to say. You know, people will do something like this. They'll run like maybe just a little bit of speed. Um, and because of that, you know, when you've got a move like Dragon Ascent, you can like set up and then potentially get your Giraffe Ink, like a Trick Room. And then all of a sudden you've got like a slow bulky specs golden go you know incineroar and like these two here or something like that um and then you can really just like sweep through under trick room but yeah this is one that i think is like really cool uh but probably won't hit its stride really until you know the double restricted so next guy we want to talk about here is the big dog and that is zashia now i'm going to talk about the crown version here but i guess it kind of go I i'm going to say like both zashians kind of fall into this as i do think the crown is probably just the better one um, but I'm sure there's like potentially a world where this guy, you know, is like still fine just as like a regular, um, fairy type. But today we're going to be talking about Zashi and Crown. And I think the best way to play this guy right now is just the Howl stuff. I kind of talked about it, you know, in a video, like one of my last videos. That's why you just, you pair up all the dogs, right? You get Zashi in here, the dog, you get Gouging Fire, the dog, you get Chien Pao, the, the Leopard dog, you know. And this, this team just starts doing big stuff, you know, you get Urshi, the big bear dog. And like you, you just start doing dog things yeah you get real Rill is not a dog but you know he's a he's an honorary dog yeah you get these guys together this guy starts clicking how you know this guy over here he's got the sword of ruin boosting everyone up this guy's like hey if you need a little bit of speed i'm your guy this guy's like hey i got a little bit of support for the boys you know and then this guy is just like i'm also gonna you know dance up myself i think this guy also gets how which is kind of funny you can like use it to set up your allies but again behemoth blade you know you've also got um player off it's just really really good man like this core here, I, I would not be surprised if we start seeing this really picking up because it has a lot of really fast options. Because like obviously this guy's gonna be boosted speed. This guy like also outspeeds everything, not named Calyrax Shadow Rider. This guy with Choice Scarf does outspeed Calyrax Shadow Rider. Like this guy here is, you know, Chen Power being one of the fastest Pokemon in the format. Um and Rillaboom is just like it's like, hey, I'm an assault this guy who likes, you know, I likes getting healed as well, or howl as well. So yeah, I think Zashi this one has a lot of, you know, I think it has a lot of potential. Like, and I definitely think it's a cool archetype. Um, I'll definitely be running it at some point in the future. So next Pokemon here we're going to touch on is Terrapagos, Terrapagos, whatever you want to call it. This generation's third restricted legendary. And by God, is this guy good? I think there is almost an argument to be made that this is like potentially the second best Pokemon in the format right now. Um, at least in terms of restricted. Definitely a top five in my opinion. Uh, and the way people are playing this guy right now with Terrapagos, I should say, is just like, I like to call it the protect king strategy. You got the Rillaboom, you got the Insin, right? You're like, I've got my double fake out, right? I've got my Intimidate, I got like my fake out, uh, so my my Grassy Surge. You know, they both have pivoting moves with like U-turn and parting shot. And then Tropagos is like, hey, I'm gonna sit here with like lefties. I've also seen people go for stuff like Covet Cloak as well, making sure you can't flinch it. And then it's gonna click its Calm Mind. You know, it could also like run sub as well, which I think is decent. And it's gonna click its Terra Star Storm, it's got Protect. Um, if you don't want to run sub as well, I think Earth Power is also really good in case, you know, you not in a game where, like, you don't want to terror this mod. Because, like, I've seen a lot of people say, like, oh, no, like, you have to terror it every game. I disagree with the right healing. I think, like, Terra Shell is so good that, like, this mod's stats are actually, like, okay enough. If you get, like, two um, Calm Minds up, you don't have to terror this thing. Now, I'm saying that it's very good. Making Terra Star Storm, you know, a spread move with, like, you know, base 120 power. Like, this guy gets the plus two with, like, a modest nature. Yeah, now, now we're, you know, we're cooking with gas here, right? That's doing a ridiculous amount of damage. Especially, too, because this special attack that goes up to, like, 130. Um, so, yeah, these two are, like, really good at helping it set up. But some of the other partners, I think, that are really good as well is Groom Snarl. Like, I think this is a mod where behind screens it is incredibly broken. Like, you get, like, a light clay on this guy with, like, ref that's light ball, light clay. You get a light clay with, like, reflect. Um, you get, like, reflect. You get light screen. And then you get, like, another parting shot as well, which is, like, really good pivot. Um, and it just makes this guy incredibly hard to deal with. Or Tropagos, I should say. And then the final one I think is really good. And I'm honestly, I can't believe I'm saying this, but this one is getting so many results right now. It's comfy. Um, comfy, however you want to pronounce it. You go the other uh, triage here, which is that, you know, this Pokemon's healing moves have priority increased by three. And then you just go draining kiss. And then you just go floral healing. 
you can put a trick room on this this mod as well like you know plot, like having trick room is like really good with a pokemon that's like pretty low speed especially because you're playing it as a, like a really bulky mon and then it just has you know whatever you want like probably protect and then you just got like terra steel and, and then your job is kind of like hey you've got to aim the comfy down or it's just going to spam floral heal on the tropagos and keep it full hp reactivating its terra shell but if you ignore it and keep hitting the terrapagos it's just going to keep calm minding up with leftovers and it's going to keep getting rehealed and again it's like hit the comfy it's like okay well i just like wiped you with terra star storm it's it's honestly really good like i can't believe i'm saying this but Terra heroes might be the best pokemon in the format i don't think it's on the same power level as cali shadow simply because cali shadow can just run through games but it is still definitely very very scary to deal with so speaking of Kelly Shadow, we do have another um, ghost psychic type I want to touch on here, and that is Lunala. Now, Lunala is a very, very interesting Pokemon in this format, right? When you look at the stats, this really does just look like a poor man's Calyrax Shadow Rider, but I do think it has a lot of things going for it that Kelly doesn't. First of all, it's a lot bulkier. Shadow Shield obviously is also a very, very good, you know, defensive ability, but this Pokemon also has access to Wide Guard, actually making one of the better answers into opposing Calyrax, as Wide Guard is a, mo like, is a move that is not really that widely distributed, but is also incredibly good in the current format. It is also a really good Trick Room Pokemon as well. Um, you know, its speed stat, while it does seem pretty fast, you know, 97 base speed is like still really, really good. But in a metagame with a lot of restricted Pokemon, sometimes they will all try to outspeed you and, you know, go into those like 120 plus speed tiers. And because of that, just having a, you know, a, a Trick Room in games where, you know, you might need it, obviously is very, very nice. And then, of course, it has Moon Guy's Beam. It's an incredible stab move. And, of course, Meteor Beam is also really, really good. I do think the Power Herb Meteor Beam set is, like, really, really sick. Um, it just gives you so much damage. And, like, because this is a Pokemon where, like, you can kind of opt to just, like, go, like, Modest Max Special Attack. I do think that's, like, really, really nice. But also, I think even things like Terra Fairy with um, Moonblast as well here. And then, you, you know, you just go a different item is still really, really good. Which Pokemon do you want to pair with this? Well, first Pokemon I really like is just, like, Assault Vest King Gambit. I think Assault Vest Gambit is, like, a very, very good defensive switch into this Pokemon. You know, it like, Lunala is a Pokemon that has, you know, it, it's, like, it can't be hit by Fighting Type, which is, like, really, really nice. And King Gambit is a Mon that does not want to get hit by Fighting Type moves, right? Very similar to, like, Lunala does not want to eat, you know, things like Astral Barrage. King Gambit with the Salt Vest can eat them all day, right? Like, defensively, it's a very, very good duo. And not to mention, King Gambit is a very good abuser of Trick Room in its own right. Some of the other Pokemon, though, I do think are, that are really good with this guy is Ursaluna. Um, Ursaluna regular form and Ndidi. Ndidi is just really nice because, again, it can stop things like Priority Sucker Punches, which Lunala really doesn't want to deal with. And Ursaluna is just a, another really strong physical attacker with things like Flame Orb and Guts. Um, and then, you know, massive EQs. You can really start doing a lot of damage. And a really cool thing as well is Lunala is a Pokemon that can just click Wide Guard next to its own Ursa Luna, who's just spamming EQs, um, and you keep it protected while also dealing massive damage. And then the last one I'll talk about here with Lunala is Tornadus. Now, the reason for Tornadus, um, very similar to, you know, what we were saying with some of the earlier Pokemon, is I think having both a Trick Room and a Tailwind option is actually pretty viable, right? Again, when you look at Lunala, this one is relatively slow. 118 in the restricted format. You know, you can definitely run this under Trick Room, especially when you're playing against other, you know, more offensive teams. But having an option like Tornadoes going up against some of the, you know, the, you know, the medium like speed tiers like your own is also really, really nice, right? Because it can, you know, give you that speed advantage in, you know, some of these, you know, balance versus balance mirrors. Not to mention, you know, again, Tornadoes has access to any weather it wants, right? So being able to, you know, set up the rain against, you know, a, a Groudon teams, for example, if that's what you struggle with. Easy. If you're struggling with Kyogre teams, you can set up the sun, so on and so forth, right? It just gives you a lot of options that I do think is very nice. So the next dog I want to talk about here is Zamazenta. Now Zamazenta, uh, again, we're going to talk about the crown form here as I do think it is the better of the two. I'm not really going to touch on the other form just because I don't think it's as good. But Zamazenta crown is a really interesting Pokemon at the minute, right? Obviously, it gets access to things like Behemoth Blade, uh, or so Behemoth Bash, but I actually, funny enough, think that Crunch is the, the better fourth move on this Pokemon. Uh, but really what it wants to do is it wants to go Iron Defense Body Press, right? Uh, and this mod it just becomes incredibly hard to deal with, especially too because it's also a wide guard mod. You know, similar to what we're saying about Lunala, this move is not really that widespread, so having that option, I think, is very, very good. But what Pokemon does this guy want to play with? Or what Zamazenta, what does he want to play with, right? Uh, obviously, I feel like I've said this for a lot of Pokemon, but really, Incineroar are, like, incredibly good. Um, just, like, having double fake out, parting shot, you know, grassy terrain to help you set up, it's just really, really nice, right? You can buy a lot of time for the Zamazenta to get its iron defenses up and really start swooping through. Um, another really good partner as well, I think, for it is actually Ting Lu. Um, Tinglu just giving it, you know, that special defense, like, buff, essentially, while um, Zamazek is using the Iron Defense to buff up its physical defense is, like, incredibly good. And I do think that is really, really nice. But yeah, I think this core here, like, we've seen pretty similar cores with, um, with, uh, what's his name? 
Tomorrow, right? Um, even things like P2 as well work kind of good with this, uh, with Zamazenta. Even like Amoongus as well is pretty nice. Um, but yeah, there's like, there's, there's a few different things. I think Zamazenta is actually a, a pretty slept on Pokemon right now. And again, access to Wide Guard is never a bad thing. It, it's, it's a really good move, man, in the current format. So next Pokemon I want to touch on here is actually Ho-Oh. Now this is another Pokemon I think is probably waiting on the double restricted to be really, really good. But I still think even now it is actually a pretty decent Pokemon. Has access to Regenerator, which is a pretty nice ability. Has a pretty, you know, solid HP stat. Very, very good special defense stat and a pretty solid attack stat. I do think like Clear Amulet or Band are probably the best way to run this Pokemon. And Sacred Fire, ooh, uh, wait, what? Sacred, that's a thought. Sacred Fire is obviously really nice and access to Brave Bird 2 is very, very good. Also has access to things like Recover as well, which I do think is pretty solid. Um, and then again, whatever you want in the last slot, right? It does have access to things like Protect. Um, it also has, you know, I think it gets Tailwind as well, if I'm not mistaken. It does, yeah. So, like, whatever the last move you want, like, honestly, this is probably just Protect, right? You're probably just going, like, Protect and something like this. And essentially, your job is just to keep it alive, right? You can use Regenerator to pivot around and kind of just be annoying. Try to spread Burn out, burn out here with the, the Sacred Fires. And then, of course, you know, you just use, um, you know, use a Defensive Terror where you want. Uh, and as I said, I think this Pokemon come double restricted is going to be really good. It's one of the better answers both into Crydon and um, Groudon. And not to mention, if you set up the Sun for it, it's going to deal massive damage with Sacred Fires. Uh, but some of the better Pokemon, I think, to pair with it, uh, one is Amoongus. It just gives you, like, the double um, double regenerated core, which is, like, really, really good. Not to mention, they both cover each other incredibly well. Uh, and to round out a Firewater Grass kill over here as well, I think Urshi Rapid is just really, really good with it. Um, it's broken. It, it, let's be honest, it's just broken, right? Like the move, the mo like some of the ones you can't hit with moves like Sacred Fire, you can kind of just run through them, you know, with things like Surging Strikes, which is definitely really, really nice. Um, and the other Pokemon I want to touch on here is Grimmsnarl. Um, I feel like I've said it, you know, so much here, but again, this is another, you know, pivot Pokemon, right? Like you could, like, say you've got Ho Oh Grimmsnarl on the board, you can like switch out your Ho Oh into your Amoongus as you like parting shot and then get your Ho Oh back in just with like one third more HP. It's kind of nutty. Uh, not to mention, again, this is one that is so physically defensive as, sorry, so bulky as it is, at least on the special side. Uh, it needs a little bit of help on the physical end. And, you know, things like light screen um, and reflect obviously can help out a lot. And, of course, intimidate as well is not too bad. I still don't know what the best intimidate partner with this is. It's honestly probably just Insin, But I could definitely see a world even where, like, Land OT is just, like, really good, right? With, like, a Scarf U-turn where you pivot out, then you U-turn out, and then you get back in. And, you know, it's just, it, it's really hard to deal with, man. I think it's, like, a really cool concept. So now I want to talk about the Dialga forms. Now, I'm going to kind of lump them together because I feel like they're probably just going to be doing the same thing. And the origin form with that extra 20 spadef is probably like just a bit better. Um, But I think these Pokemon are both really good at being like just bulky trick room mods, right? And because of that, I think the Pokemon you actually want to pair this with are things like Ursa Luna, um, the regular Ursa Luna, Indeedee, and Ogreborn. Um, Essentially, like the way I kind of see you wanting to play this Pokemon, and I, I think even like, again, the cornerstone might be okay, but I think Wellspring is also just really solid. But essentially, like, what you want to kind of, like, position this team to do is, like, get Dialga and Ursaluna on the board at the same time. Because, like, Dialga has um, Telepathy, which means it doesn't take any damage from its allies' spread moves. So you can just, like, have this situation where you've got this Pokemon with 150 special attack next to, like, a burnt Ursaluna. Um, also, Incineroar as well works, like, really good on this team as well, because that's how you can, like, parting shot into your Ursaluna on turn one and stuff. Uh, but yeah, like, Flame Orb, Earth Power, sorry, Earthquake, not hitting your Dialga is like so big. And then like this thing just drops like Dracos and um and Flash Cannons. And I think it's just like really, really solid, yeah. And again, like in DD, it's your second Trick Room on. Like that's probably something I should mention here. This is also a Trick Room setter, which is like really good. But having like two Trick Room setters, you know, double redirection, something like Insin just to like give you fake out pressure plus like parting shot. It's just really, really nice, right? Because you can have games where like you lead these two and then you just go like fake out plus like Trick Room with Dialga. Uh, and then, you know, again, this is also like, like a lot of people forget Insin actually hits hard, man. Even when like four into the attack, like a Flare Blitz and a knockoff of this thing actually do a lot of damage. Um, and also if your opponent leads poorly into like Instant Dialga, you just go like Trick Room Parting Shot and then you've just got these two next to each other with a Burtos Luna. Uh, it's honestly like really good. So the next one here is the Solgaleo slash, um, I guess the Dusk, uh, the Dawn, no, is it Dusk Mane? Yeah, Dusk Mane. Basically the North Crosma version of this thing. Um, again, I'm going to kind of just lump them together because I think they're very similar. Um, Obviously, you know, full metal body and um, uh, what's its ability? Prism armor, I think it has. Well, let's, let's, let's pull him up. Dusk main. Uh, yeah, Prism armor. Yeah, like if you look at their stats, like they're somewhat comparable. You know, Soul Gallery is a bit bulkier. Um, the Cosmo is like a little slower and hits a little harder. But realistically, I think they're probably doing the exact same thing anyway. They're both just like steel types that set up Trick Room. Oh, did I lie? Oh, God. Yeah, they're both steel types that set up Trick Room. Um, they both like pretty good weakness policy mons. Like I honestly don't think either of them are that good right now, which is kind of sad. 
Um, but I think the bonsai pair the best with is like Indeedee. Um, a big reason why I think Indeedee is really good is because they get access to Psychic Fangs. Um, and Psychic Fangs in terrain does like a lot of damage, especially to when like, um, you know, you've just got like the potential weakness policy here as well. It also gets access to uh, Morning Sun, you know, for recovery. Um, and it gets, what is it? It's like Sun Steel Strike or something like that. Yeah, yeah, Sun Steel Strike, yeah. It, it, like, it has good recovery. It's a Trick Room Setter. It's very bulky. Um, you know, weakness policy is really nice. And again, just having, like, Indeedee to help you set up the Trick Room, also giving, you know, a boost to Psychic Fangs, I do think is pretty nice. Uh, but other Pokemon as well are things like Ogre Pawn. Um, again, Ogre Pawn and, like, Incin are just really good at helping them get up the Trick Room. Uh, and then, of course, I also think that Blood Moon Ursa Luna here is also really, really good. Again, like, when you're talking about having these, like, you know, these sweepers or these, like, you know, restricted, you know, Pokemon that sweep under Trick Room, I feel like, literally... Have a look at their best stat, right? So these guys here, you know, Salgalio and Necrozma, they're both physical attackers. They need a special attacker that's also good in Trick Room. You give them a Blood Moon Ursa Luna, right? When you look at some of the other Pokemon that we spoke about, like Lunala, for example, that's a special attacker in Trick Room. You give it regular Ursa Luna, man. It's like, they're both just like really good. Uh, but yeah, like, I don't necessarily think this archetype is the best, or like these, you know, restrictors, I should say, are the best, but I definitely think this is the best way to play it, right? You kind of have these support Pokemon that enable the Trick Room to go up, uh, and then you just have, like, the Ursa Luna as the, the other option to just, like, sweep under Trick Room. So, for the next one here, we have Lugia. Now, shout out the homie G-Man. I do know this is his favorite Pokemon. Um, Lugia is, like, a really interesting Pokemon, because it has multi-scale. I do think it's, like, a really nice weakness policy Pokemon. But when you look at the spread, or the stats on this mod, HP, very solid. 106 is very, very nice. 130 defense, 154 speed death is absolutely insane. It also has a stab aeroblast as well, um, which is like a really, really good move. Like you have a look at this, base 195 accuracy, high crit rate. That's a very, very strong move, right? It's literally like air slash on crack, except instead of flinching, it can crit. But this Pokemon's biggest issue is this. Even if you go modest, like you literally are still hitting as hard as like an uninvested Fluttermane, which is like crazy, dude. Like look at this, Fluttermane with like four speed attack, <laughs> hits 156 this thing with modest max hits 156 like this is a restricted this is just you know a, a funny little flutter main right which is kind of crazy uh but yeah lugia is a really interesting pokemon and its whole thing is kind of just built around you know weakness policy just like setting up right uh you know with its multi-scale um has recover which is nice um obviously a major thing too as well as it i can't spell man this can't mind like it kind of wants to run something like this um and then like does it get access to, like earth power it does yeah so you probably want earth power just to hit like the steel and rock types but yeah, like realistically, what this Pokemon wants to do is just pair it with Pokemon that really enable it to do what it wants to do. And you guys already know what Pokemon enable it to do what it wants to do. It's Incineroar and it's Rillaboom. Um, I also like probably don't throw out enough. Amoongus also fits really well with these cores as well. It does like a very similar thing to Rillaboom where it's like, you know, it has the, the healing option with things like Pollen Puff. Uh, but rather than having Fake Out, it has options like Spore um, and Rage Powder, which I do think are very, very good. Uh, but another Pokemon I think works incredibly well with it is actually um, Grimmsnarl. Now, uh, one thing I probably haven't said enough about Grimmsnarl and why I think it's like super good is like when you look at a Pokemon like Lugia, it's a psychic type, right? What have we said is the best Pokemon in the format? It is Mr. Astral Barrage Spammer himself, Mr. Calyrex Shadow Rider. So because of that, having a dark type like Grimmsnarl that is not only immune to the, you know, the expanding forces, but resists the, the, the Astral Barrages is really nice. And then it has pri like priority light screen. Um, so stuff like that I think is very, very good. And again, when you talk about some of these Pokemon here, like this guy, you know, the Incin, he gets Parting Shot. Grimmsnarl, he gets Parting Shot. And then like Rillaboom, he gets uh, U-Turn. So like you have this ability here that's kind of like pivot like these Pokemon around, like the Rilla Incin and Grimmsnarl. And just heal up your Lugia, like click top line, get your weakness policy. And then eventually get yourself into a position where like, if you're able to get to like plus two, plus three on this Pokemon, uh, then all of a sudden Lugia just starts like dealing massive damage with the Aeroblasts. So the next Pokemon I want to talk about here is another one I'm kind of interested to see how people really develop, uh, and that is Palkia. Um, and again, I think both Palkias are probably pretty similar, uh, but for right now, I think Origin might be a little bit better, at least for what we're about to talk about here, right? Um, and for this set, it is just another rain set, right? So Palkia Origin is a very fast Pokemon, base 120, uh, has, you know, 150 speed. Uh, what it really kind of wants is speed control, plus it just wants like other really fast, you know, hard hitters. Plus, it also does not mind playing under Trick Room. And because of, so not Trick Room, Tailwind. And because of that, I think Pelipper is actually pretty good. Um, obviously, Pelipper is one of, you know, the, the lesser Trick Room, uh, sorry, Weather Setters right now. But one major thing Pelipper has going for it is because it's so slow, if you lead, for example, like Pelipper in a matchup against Sun, you will always get your Weather up unless they lead like Torkoal, which again, like, don't run Torkoal over Groudon and, um, and Mariah, guys. 
But yeah, like Pelipper with like Focus Sash actually isn't too bad because it can go like max speed with Drizzle. You can run like Hurricane, Weather Ball, and then, you know, uh, Wide Guard, which again is like very, very pog right now. Uh, but yeah, like I think Pelipper, like unironically, is like pretty decent. Um, and again, when you put it next to Palkia, who's like pretty quick, if you do get up the Tailwind for it, all of a sudden this Mon in rain is actually going to be like hitting really hard. Uh, now, it does suck that it probably has to run Hydro Pump, right? Like, I don't think it gets any better water moves off the top of my head. Do you get a better water move? It's like, yeah, like literally Surf. Like, maybe you could like slap Surf on there and just say Pelipper spam your wide guards. But realistically, you do have to have Hydro Pump on there. Um, but what's your signature move? It's not Roar of Time, it's Spatial Rend, right? Yeah, Spatial Rend also is actually like a pretty nice Dragon type move as well. Uh, but I do think this Mon, like, essentially, when you pair it with Rain, you kind of just want to spam out your pumps anyway and kind of pray you hit, which is, like, really sad. Um, but another really good partner as well, though, I think, is Basque Legion. Basque Legion is just a cool Mon, man. Like, this thing with Scarf or Band in Rain is, like, kind of nutty. Like, a late game banded, like, Swift Swimmer with, um, what's it called? Last Respects is, like, really, really good. And this Mon's also, like, pretty bulky as well. It has a really good HP stat. Defenses are, like, pretty suboptimal. But like in rain or like or with a choice band like this one like does like it does a lot of damage dude wave crash in rain off this pokemon's like kind of nutty uh but the last one i'll quickly throw in here for now is lando uh, a big reason for having lando here is like it's a natural terra poison mon um but also just loves having like sludge bomb in its kit uh palkia is a pokemon that does you know tend to struggle a bit with fairy types especially like because you're kind of relying on that uh that hydro pump to hit but having lander is just gives you another option into fairy types right it gives you a pokemon that can potentially resist them um, and because of that, I do think it is, like, really, really nice, right, with Terra Poison. Uh, and I guess as well, as an extension of that, talking about the fairy types, the best fairy type in the game right now is Fluttermane, which is also a, a ghost type. And that's another big reason why I think, you know, Swift Swim Basque Legion is also pretty pog. So, surprisingly enough, the next guy I'm going to talk about here is actually Reshiram, because I don't think this one is actually that bad. Like, it is a Dragon Fire type, which is actually pretty good typing. And when you look at its stats, like, really everything on it is pretty decent outside of its speed stat. Now... I will say this is one of those like Pokemon that it really wishes it lost 20 units in attack stat and was just given towards like bulk because like we're not really using this physical attack stat. But Reshiram is another one that I think probably is waiting on double restricted because it like wants to be on teams that kind of struggles into like some of the sun teams because I think this is like actually a really good sun abuser, right? Like being a sun abuser that doesn't just auto lose to Fluttermane, I think is really, really good. Not to mention you're a special attacker, so you don't care that much about the intimidates and you're not forced to run something like Clear Amulet. Now, again, it does hit, like, very hard on the special end. And when you have a look, it actually does have some pretty interesting special moves, right? Obviously, it has things like Blue Flare, but realistically, you're probably just running Fusion Flare most of the time. It also gets access to things like Earth Power as well, which is pretty good. Draco Meteor, obviously, is always pretty solid as well. But really, it does have, you know, quite a few different options here. Shadow Ball as well, which is not bad. Even, you know, things like Scorching Sands. But realistically, you're probably out as going for the Earth Power. But how do I think you play this Pokemon? Well... Again, Reshiram is kind of like an anti-Sun Mon in a sense. It doesn't necessarily want to play into the Groudon, but there are ways around it. Um, actually, does it get Weather Ball? That's a great question. It does get Weather Ball. Yeah, Weather Ball is like actually like pretty decent as well if you go up against like some rain teams. Um, but yeah, what Mons you want to play with it? Mons like Fluttermane, I think are like obviously just going to be really good. If you're using this thing to like, like you know, help battle against Sun, I think having another Sun Abuser in something like Fluttermane is really, really good. Um, having your own Tornadus as well, I think, is pretty good. Because, like, Reshiram's speeds here is not bad, but it's not great. So, having access to, you know, things like Tailwind. Uh, and, again, the option to, you know, manually set your own sun in certain games, I do think, is definitely very, very good. Uh, and then another Pokemon, I think, here is just Rillaboom. Um, having a pivot into some of those ground-type moves, I do think, is very, very good. Now, again, I don't necessarily think Reshiram is all that right now. This Pokemon's, like, really interesting. And, like, I don't think it's going to see too much play. Um, at least in the single restricted format, but like once we get to double, I would not be surprised if it's Pele definitely picks up. So continuing on with the Generation 5 Legendaries here, we actually have Curum White. Now, part of me wishes I spoke about Curum White earlier on in the video, because I do feel like we're kind of getting to the end where these are some of the lesser restricteds. But Curum White is actually a really, really interesting Pokemon right now because of what it can do in Snow with Nine Tails. So when you look at Curum White, guys, its stats are pretty good, honestly. Its HP stat is very, very nice. Special attack stat is absolutely insane. Speed stat, honestly, is not that bad. But where it's kind of really let down is its defense stat and its special defense stat. But when you base 110 physical defense, you know, sure, as a restricted, that's pretty low. But then you pair that up with Ninetales, who gives you snow. And then all of a sudden, that becomes, you know, that one, what is that, 110 then goes up to, what, 165, which is actually really, really solid. And then in terms of the special defense, you know, base 100 is actually pretty good. But you also have options like Assault Vest. Now, I think Assault Vest or Choice Specs are the best way to go on this Pokemon. But really, what you kind of want to do is you want to spam out Blizzard. You've always got Freeze Strike. You need it. 
Um, obviously, options like Draco Meteor as well are very, very nice. And of course, it gets Earth Power. So because of that, I do think Assault Vest and Specs are both probably the better ways to run it because you do kind of want access to all of them. Now, I will say, I did see one player running. I think it was it's Ice Burn off memory. I think that's it. It's like a signature move. Yeah, this, like Ice Burn plus Meteor, Um, sorry, Power Herb apparently is like also pretty funny. Um, Because like Ice Burn does like, it does insane damage. <laughs> Look at that. Like, I wish it was a guaranteed burn because it is a charge. Like, I don't like these charge moves that like, you know, don't always burn. Plus, they can miss. It feels kind of weird. Uh, but that is a definitely like definitely another set you can run. Uh, but what mon mons do you want to pair this guy with? Um, first one is like Kasui and Arcanine. Um, obviously, you, you know, it's an Intimidate mon, which definitely helps out with that you know lesser physical defense stat. But also, we've seen you know a lot of people running these Articuno teams in Regulation F, and I think Arcanine is like very similar you know in this format as it is there. It is just really good into a lot of the Pokemon that beat Kuro, right? Uh, and then the last Pokemon we'll throw in this core for now is just Tornadus. Um, everyone's favorite guy. Obviously, uh, having Tailwind, I do think, is very, very nice. Uh, again, because this Pokemon speed stat is it's decent. Like, by, you know, like having, you know, 115 or 116 with, like, only four special uh, speed is, like, pretty good. Uh, but realistically, you are getting outsped by a lot of Pokemon that actually want to invest in their speed. So having the Tailwind option is very, very nice. And, of course, I think when you're playing Weather in the current format, having a manual setter like this is very, very good. And having Snowscape, I think, is a very, very solid. So the next one we're going to talk about here is Eternatus. Now, Eternatus is a Pokemon that has actually had some results. I think Robin Solo Run's been playing it a bit in some online tours. And he's actually been having a lot of success with it. And the way I believe he's kind of running it is just pressure stalling people with it, which is really good. So when you have pressure stall, right, you have things like Cosmic Power, and then you have Recover. And essentially what this Pokemon does is it like sits here with like leftovers or whatever item it is you want. And it kind of does Cosmic Powers up, spams Recover, and then all of a sudden you just don't have your like main move for killing it. Uh, how else, I guess, do you kind of like position this one to like set up? Because again, it's very bulky. Its HP stats are really good. Defensive stats are like pretty solid. And it's also really fast. It's really hard. You know, it runs things like Sludge Bomb and Flamethrower, which I think is definitely really, really good. But it pairs up with everyone's favorite, the dynamic duo, the the enablers of the format. You guys already know who it is. It's Incin and it's Rillaboom. Like, like again, like you've got this one in Eternatus, doesn't want to eat ground moves. Who's happy eating ground moves? It's my soul. There's Rillaboom, Blaze. It's like, oh, you know, my physical defense stats like pretty poor. Boys, we got Intimidate plus Fake Out plus Parting Shot. It feels pretty damn good. And it's like, oh, like how else do we enable this guy? It's like, well, you know, I like Internatus, he's a poison type. He kind of loses to Psy Spam. Oh, there's this guy called Grim Snarl that like eats the Psy Spam for breakfast and he just sets up Light Screen. It's like, oh yeah, that's great. And then it's like, oh, you know, we're talking about like Eternatus, you know, it doesn't like Psy Spam. It doesn't like ground moves. Cresselia is like, hey, I'm off the ground. I can eat the Psy Spam for days. And then I can also heal you up when you get low with Luna Blessing. It's like, th this core here is like super obnoxious. And like, I think like you could even opt to just like drop this for things like Toxic Spikes and just be like super annoying, man. Because like you use the Incineroar to like really slow people down and like force them to pivot out their mons. And then you can just like get up spikes and just spam Cosmic Power Recover and just be like super annoying. Like I could even see a world where like Glamora works with it. The biggest issue with Glamora is then you just like, if you've got Insing Glamora plus Eternatus, like you just really struggle into, um, you know, ground types. But yeah, it's still a really interesting core. Um, and honestly, like I I'm scared of seeing this thing do good because like beating it will take a lot of brain power unless you just have like a specific team that can run straight through it. So the next mod we're going to touch on here is Zekrom. Now Zekrom is a really interesting mod, right? Because when you think about Zekrom, you see it as a dragon electric type. And let's be honest, this Pokemon is not Mariadon. As a matter of fact, it probably isn't even as good as Raging Bolt. But I do think it is still an interesting Pokemon nonetheless. Obviously, with Clear Amulet, it is definitely, you know, it's definitely an option, right? When you're talking about a Pokemon such, you know, high uh, attack stat, I think the option of Clear Amulet is very, very nice. And Dragon's Electric is still a very good typing, especially when you have access to things like Dragonair to help you set up. Not to mention, you know, you are a Dragon type, which means, you know, spamming out your Dragon Claws, you know, which unfortunately probably is its best move because I don't think this thing even gets Breaking Swipes. Okay, it does get Breaking Swipes, I like gets breaking swipes but i think dragon claw because you're trying to deal damage is like probably your best move but then you have options like bolt strike um which i do think is like okay um, but I, what, what's the electric move I, there's one other electric move i think is better than bolt strike it's more consistent the base 100 one ah uh, fusion bolt yeah yeah fusion bolt i think you probably just run something like this where you're like dragon claw fusion bolt um dragon dance and protect um and then again you can just like start really pumping into this attack stat because like base 150 is still really really good right but how do we enable this mod um, again, Rilla Incin, I think is just, it's good, man, fake out, intimidate, you know, a, a pivot into those ground type moves, like, you, you can't go wrong with it, like, it is good, uh, Grimmsnarl, again, is, like, another one that I think is really good at enabling it, because 
like again you can like lead this moment you can click dragon dance and then you like protect parting shot into your incineral which then you intimidate and then you like fake out dragon dance to get a fire off an attack and then you can protect you know pivot out it's just dude, it just begins this cycle that is super annoying to deal with um another pokemon i don't think i've even spoken enough about today though is shen pao like shen pao plus zekrom is really good because if you are able to get up that like dragon dance then all of a sudden you have like a clear amulet zekrom next to a focus sash chen pao and you're about to pump out a lot of damage which i do think is really cool uh but yeah zekrom is like an interesting mon right like again i actually think like if Mariodon didn't exist now with clear amulet this pokemon could actually be like half decent uh but again its biggest issue is it's like probably the third best dragon electric type in the format which i do think is pretty sad so guys the final core i'm going to talk about here is the uh the core i like to call um needs jesus so this is the giratina core both Giratina forms, it's the Mewtwo, um, Mewtwo, uh, and sadly, it is the Curan Black one, right? It's, it's the Curan Black. This is probably just, like, worse back caliber. These three Pokemon, sadly enough, I, I just don't think you run them. Like, I, I can give you guys a brief rundown of these guys. Like, Giratina, don't run it. It's bad. Like, it is literally, like, uh, you run Curan Black before you run Giratina. Giratina is the worst Dragon type restricted in the format. Don't run it. Mewtwo, I love you, but my god, you need a new ability. Um, I've seen a lot of people, I think, like, I saw, like, Moxie Boosted talking about it. Um, uh, Ultra and Necrozma, give it this ability. Give Mewtwo Neuro Force, man. And, like, if, if Mewtwo got this ability with all these, like, really good special coverage moves it gets, because, like, you have a look at this. Mewtwo's got it all, man. He's a Gen 1 Legendary. He's got every freaking move in the game. Like, look at this shit, man. Hurricane, Thunder, Side Shock, Earth Power. You know, Energy Ball, Flamethrower, Ice Beam, Psychic, Thunderbolt. Uh, dude, he's got all the coverage moves in the world. Give him Neuroforce and, like, maybe Mewtwo becomes good. Uh, Mewtwo's biggest issue is there's just a lot better Psychic Restricteds. Like, yeah, sure, you could run it with, like, Expanding Force, put it next to an Ndidi. D just don't do it. I love Mewtwo. It's, like, one of my favorite all-time mons, man. But, like, it's it's a bad Pokemon. And Curan Black, sadly, like, <laughs> like, dude, it's literally just worse Baxcalibur. It's Baxcalibur, but it's a Restricted slot. Like, you look at these two Pokemon here, like, oh, HP, okay, very similar. Attack stat, like, yeah, it's higher, but, like, it really isn't that different. Defense, relatively similar. Special defense, relatively similar. Speed stat, relatively similar. Like, Baxcalibur is just, like, Curum uh, Black, but with, like, slightly less in all its stats. But it also just has a better ability in, like, Thermal Exchange. Even Ice Body is just better than Terra Nova, man. It's, like, literally, like, if you, yeah, sure, you could run, like, a, you know, a Dragon Dance set. But, again, it's, like, probably just run, like, like, go, like, Dragon Dance, Clear Amulet may as well just do that with Bax Calibur. like it's again it's, it's like the same thing dude i don't know it's like do you get ice shot even like you don't even get ice shot like yeah sure you can run like ice school spear but like so can Bax Calibur. like i don't know dude it's it's sad like I, I feel bad for not really giving you guys much on these three but i don't know dude i did i don't think you should run them that that's like that's why i said they need jesus these guys need something else man like kiram do you need a new signature move when we get the black white remakes Giratina, like, I don't know. Like, again, like, this it, is like, it, it's got the Gen 4 treatment where they're all just pressure telepathy. Like, give it an actual ability, and it's, like, probably just so much better. Um, and yeah, give me two Neuroforce, uh, and it'll be a lot better. But yeah, anyway, guys, that's gonna be it for this one. Uh, let me know what you think down below. Uh, and yeah, I'll catch you guys on the next one. Peace.